Oh man, guys, I am so frustrated right now. I am so sad. I'm so disappointed. I'm gonna tell you guys what happened before I jump into this episode. Thank you guys so much for 50,000 likes, by the way. So what happened was I was super excited to record. It was after the fourth class trial, and then I recorded for an hour and a half. So many things happened in this episode, and when I went to go edit the video, it was a black screen. There was audio that was still there, but it was a black screen. So when you guys would watch it, it would be nothing but a black screen, but you can hear the audio and you can see my face cam, but there was no gameplay. So I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Like there were so many good moments there. I wanted you guys to see my reactions to all the things that happened. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to record it again, but then I'm going to tell you guys that I already played through it. So I did it again. It took me another hour and a half and I recorded the whole thing. The same exact thing happened. It recorded a black screen with audio. I found out that there was like some update to the software that I used to record gameplay. So I uninstalled it. I went back to the previous version of the software that I had and hopefully this works. If you guys are seeing this video, that means the gameplay recorded. It's not a black screen. I already know what's going to happen. So instead of going through it a third time, I'm just going to summarize exactly what I remember happening. And I know that sucks. But I'm so sorry about that, guys, because I just can't do it again. I can't go through it a third time. So basically, after the trial, Makoto is going to sleep in his room. And Kyoko ends up going to his room at 3 in the morning. And she says that she knows that there's a 16th student in the school named Mukuro Ikusaba. And that she's a girl who's a teenager just like them. And yeah, she's been in the school the whole time, I'm assuming, because she says that she's been here. And during the class trials, there is a 16th seat in there since the very beginning of all the trials. So that must mean we were supposed to be expecting a 16th student the whole time. But anyway, Kyoko ends up finding this key that's kind of like the shape of Monokuma. So it unlocks something in the school, and I don't know it yet, so we're gonna figure that out in this episode right here. So Kyoko has some kind of key that can unlock somewhere in the school, so she wants to investigate that. But Biakuya doesn't trust Kyoko because Biakuya doesn't know who Kyoko really is. Like, he's kind of questioning who she is, what she does, why she's at the school, and Kyoko won't say anything. But I think the only person that she trusts in the school is Makoto, so she tells Makoto everything that she thinks that somebody is controlling Monokuma because Monokuma isn't really, like, his own thing. Monokuma is controlled by the mastermind or the headmaster of the whole school. So it actually turns out that Biakuya found Monokuma not moving. And Monokuma is actually controlled, like remote controlled by something. And so they were like, all right, since Monokuma isn't watching us anymore, let's explore the school. And while this is all going on, Makoto is kind of feeling under the weather. So while he's feeling under the weather, somebody comes into his room wearing a mask and is holding a knife in their hand, like right above him on the bed. And he's kind of freaking out because he's like, who the hell is this? Like, who is trying to kill me in the middle of the night while I have like this fever? Because I just told you guys he was sick. So he thought he was dreaming the whole time. But it turns out that that actually happened because what I forgot to mention to you guys was when they unlocked the new level, you know, after the class trial, a new level of the school unlocks, they found a knife that was on the new floor of the school. And all the students asked Makoto to hold on to it. So he kept it in his desk drawer. But when he looked in his drawer, the knife was gone. So he was like, okay, I must have seen somebody come into my room. So the rest of the guys besides Makoto don't know about the 16th student in the school, Makuro Ikusaba. Only Kyoko and Makoto know about that person. So what ends up happening at the very end of the episode, which makes me so mad that I can't show you guys, is that they found a body, the same body that Makoto saw that was standing above his bed. The person wearing a mask, the person wearing the white lab coat, the person had the knife inside of their body and they were just dead on the ground. They were gonna take off the mask to see who it was, but the body ends up exploding so they can't determine who the person actually is because the person was burnt to a crisp. I ended the episode there, but that is everything that happened. I apologize to anybody who's seen this game for the first time that doesn't get to experience all of like the dialogue and the buildup of all that. I apologize, guys. I tried so hard to record it twice for you all, and it just kept messing up. So I'm really kicking myself about all this stuff. 
but we are gonna continue Danganronpa right now and figure out who that person was. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go! So yeah, guys, this is the body that was on the ground right here. It's all charred because the body blew up when we tried to take off the mask. This is the knife that was inside the body, and all the other characters are here, but Kyoko is nowhere to be found. At first, when I saw this body, I thought it might be Kyoko, but I don't actually think it's Kyoko, but we're gonna check out this body. I should take a close look at the body one more time. So, Watch um... yourself, Makoto. She may be dead, but she's still a girl. Don't worry, I don't plan on touching the body all that much. I'm not Kyoko after all. What does that mean? You're not Kyoko after all. Oh wait, because Kyoko does like thorough examinations? Wait, this person has red fingernails, woman's boots. Kyoko had boots like that, right? This is definitely not Kyoko, I don't think. Hold on, there's something on the ground there. Oh, this thing? There's something next to the body. It's... It's a key? Is it what Kyoko took from Monokuma? But what did you steal? So... I stole this. A key? Yeah, that's the key that she took, guys. And she only told Makoto about it. But looking at it, I could tell it wasn't just any key. It was shaped like Monokuma. It was probably the only key of its kind on Earth. And now she's trying to figure out where it unlocks. That's right. The key she stole was shaped like Monokuma. This isn't anything like that. Then this key is... What? What is it? Did you find something? Yeah, this was on the ground near the body. I've never seen this before. What could it possibly go to? So even you don't know then. Hmm. Makoto, I'm gonna give you a very important task. Huh? I see. That key might give you access to certain areas we thought were locked. You mean... So in the biolab, the data center, the headmaster's room, and the dorm rooms on the second floor. It's in your hands. So I'm your errand boy now? Oh, that's it? By the way, guys, I'm sorry if my voice gets lost quicker or it becomes raspy. I literally got done recording those other two episodes back to back, so I'm very sad about that. The only room I need to check on this floor is the bio lab. So yeah, my voice is already gone from checking all this stuff out. Oh, and by the way, this room right here, this room was like really bloody and there was like uh, chalk outlines all throughout the floor. So there was some kind of like weird battle that went on in there. But I need to check the bio lab because I've never been in here before. The bio lab was definitely locked before. Okay, let's give it a shot. When I went to insert the key I'd found in the garden into the keyhole, the key isn't even close to fitting, which means the key doesn't go to this room. Damn it. Okay, the key doesn't go to that room. You know what I think it goes to? I think it goes right to the headmaster's office. So, we are gonna go straight there. Let me see. Okay, you know what? Since I'm here, might as well check the data lab. The door to the data center was definitely locked before. Okay, let's give it a shot. When I went to insert the key I'd found in the garden into the keyhole... It fits! Then this is the key to the data center! I'd managed to unlock the data center! I guess all that running around paid off. I have to go tell everyone else. I immediately headed back to the garden. Okay, well, I guess we got lucky. So you're back. How'd it go? I found out which room the key goes to. It's the data center down on the fourth floor. Then we can get into the data center now? I see. Interesting. But why did the now deceased have the key on them? Hm. I suppose we'll just have to go to the data center and find out. Yeah, I think you're right. Hmm. Here we are. Looks like the door is still unlocked. Hey, so when you open that door, there's not going to be another huge kaboom like before, right? Uh, um... You're asking that question now? <laughs> Don't worry, we have Makoto. What? In other words... It's in your hands. Again? <laughs> it means I trust you. That's an absolute lie. I'm just being used. I reached out and put my hand on the door. I closed my eyes and tried to clear my mind. With a silent prayer, I slowly opened the door. Nothing happened. After making sure I was still alive, I slowly opened my eyes. Yeah, guys, Monokuma isn't going to be chasing us because Monokuma was a robot and just got um, his parts removed by the rest of the students because they found him inside the gym and he wasn't even moving. So Biakuya disassembled him and now Monokuma won't be chasing us anymore. In a word, the room was strange. I mean, all the rooms up until now were strange, but this room had a special kind of strangeness. It wasn't a surface fear like the rest of the school. Here, the fear was lurking beneath the surface. The room was filled with that kind of dread. What? What? Hey, that's... Hero extended a trembling hand and pointed. Look at those monitors on the wall. 
Look what they're showing. Oh, the whole school? I mean, we been knew that somebody was watching us, right? Each monitor displayed a different section of the school. The dorms, the classrooms, every part of the school was covered. This is... What? It's the direct feed from every single surveillance camera. All the cameras in the school feed back into this room. And they're displayed here on these monitors. So that's So the sole it. purpose of this room is to watch us. <gasps> to watch us?! Then this room is... It's all clear. The Mastermind's private room, without a doubt. The Mastermind's room. I guess that makes sense. So the Mastermind was here. Where's Kyoko, though? She has to be on one of these screens. Watching us. <laughs> then I think this settles it. Huh? Huh? Hmm. The body in the garden. If they had the key to this room, it can only mean one thing. <laughs> that was the body of Mokuro Ikusaba, and she was the Mastermind. Huh? Then the Mastermind is dead? Like, really, really dead? <laughs> it would seem so. For serious? It's too bad they had to go and die before Master could kill them himself. The Mastermind is dead? Could that really be true? Does that mean it's all over? Because, I mean, that body... Whatever happened, they obviously didn't die a natural death. So who was it that... Maybe Kyoko what? killed that person? But if the Mastermind really is dead... Whoa! That means we can finally get out of this hellhole! We gotta hurry up and find the exit, come on! That's enough. No, we have to check this area thoroughly first. Huh? But what about the exit? Hm. If the Mastermind truly is dead, we can leave whenever we decide to. But right now, <laughs> we need to find out why the Mastermind set up this life or death game in the first place. Hm. And I'm bothered by the fact that the Mastermind was obviously murdered. What? Murdered?! So you think so too, huh? Naturally. Naturally. Hmm. The state of the corpse makes it plain as day. There is absolutely no doubt. You freaking think? I know these are supposed to be high school kids, but use your common sense. The knife is literally in a place where she was eating her last night's dinner, right there in her stomach, and you don't think she was murdered. Okay. The mastermind was murdered. But Why is it gotta be that way? I mean, who could have even done it? That's exactly why I said we need to investigate the purpose and identity of the Mastermind. <laughs> now do you, you understand, you useless insect? You're banned from talking to Master ever again! The Mastermind's purpose, and why they were killed. This room may very well hold the answers to those questions. After all, the Mastermind must have spent who knows how much time here. <laughs> okay then, let us begin our search. It's time to uncover the identity of the Mastermind. Well, there's a door right back here. This door's kind of creepy. It's got a picture of Monokuma on it. What could be inside? No luck. Um... The door's locked, huh? What if you use that key that opened this room? Let's give it a try, just in case. Nope, no good. It won't even fit in the keyhole. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. The Mastermind's dead, right? So nothing's gonna happen to us. Yeah, I guess you're right. I can't stop thinking about that door with Monokuma's picture on it. But worrying about it isn't going to do me any good. Hina's right. The Mastermind's gone, so there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. There's a bunch of computers all lined up. They look like high-performance PCs. Nothing like the ancient laptop Alter Ego was installed on. Hmm. They're all on, but they seem to be locked. So what? We can't do anything? Just use your fighting spirit to force your way in! <laughs> what century are you from? The Mastermind must have been using these to monitor the network. And Alter Ego. Hmm. You may well be right about that. What? But there's no point in thinking about it now. You're right. What else can we check out? Oh, these monitors right here? There's really a ridiculous number of monitors here. And the Mastermind's been using them all to spy on us. As long as I have this... Huh? Look at Master Go. It's like a feast for the eyes. How much is a monthly membership? What in the world? Chill with that, girl. Chill with that. Alright, I guess we gotta talk to the fellas. Wait, what's this? There's nothing showing up on this one. Hmm. Huh, hey, look, next to that TV. Isn't that a TV antenna? How about that? It is. It's just like the one my grandma uses. It's totally one of those high def antennas. Wait, so if we hook up that antenna, we could watch TV? Huh? huh? Did someone say TV? You know? Well, well, Saturday morning Hina's here. Mm. Uh, are you talking about me? Okay. 
Anyway, if we can watch TV, let's do it. Come on, come on, come on! You know? Ah, you're all star for info from the outside world, huh? Hmm. All right, let me work my magic, and you'll be quantum leaping your way to TV land before you know it. I mean, I get the reference, but what's he talking about? You know? Huh? Huh? Oh! Whoa! whoa, whoa, whoa. What's wrong? Hmm. Good news for all you Saturday morning kitties out there. I think I got the TV working. Ah. Really? Hmm. Now all we gotta do is switch it on. What? Then do it. Uh. Freaking idiot mastermind. All you guys need to cut free from your regrets of the outside world. The and they were sitting here watching TV the whole time. They really thought they could get away with it? Wait, what? Huh? huh? This is... It's the feed coming from the surveillance camera monitoring this room, isn't it? What the heck? Huh, that's weird. That's actually really Come creepy. On. Hey, what are you doing? Huh? That's really weird, huh? <clears throat> You're weird. Weird in every way possible. And not just weird, super weird. But... But this TV isn't hooked up to anything but the antenna. So how is it showing the camera feed? Well... Did you try changing the channel? Uh... Oh, good idea. Let's give that a try. Hero went through each channel one by one. But on every channel, it was just us. It was a live feed of us standing there in the data center. What the heck? What the heck? Hmm. Is it broken or something? What if they're on a game show? Could it be? No, there must be some kind of trick to it. Some weird setup. Some evil, hey. twisted game show. What the? A trick? What kind of trick? Actually. I'm not sure, but... <laughs> Huh? Hmm? Huh? 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 What? <laughs> ah! Been a while, you freaking bastards! Monokuma! Huh? How? Huh? You're supposed to be dead! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Me dead? Don't be freaking stupid! <laughs> hey, you're acting kind of strange! Something seems different! Of course. of course I'm different! Evolution is perfectly natural! After all, I've been hibernating for two years already. Uh, Not even. It's been like half a day at most. How are you alive again? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> the look on your faces right now is sublime. That's what I wanted to see. The moment you went from hope to despair. <laughs> Don't tell me you pretended to be dead all for this moment. <laughs> Why would a bear pretend to be dead? You're the ones who should pretend to be dead when you see a bear. I mean, that's totally laughable. It makes me laugh. I'm gonna laugh now. <laughs> well, now. And that's that. She well, it's almost time to cut off your past so full of hope and begin to despair at the future ahead of you. I want you all to have way more fun in this killing game. You can't be serious. We have to keep going? No, we were supposed to get out of here. Get out of here? Are you still obsessed with getting out of here? How do you not get it? There is no getting out of here. And besides, yep. this life isn't all bad, you know. I mean, there's stuff you won't like about life no matter where you are. Are you serious? This place is the worst. <laughs> if it's the worst, does that mean you're in despair? <laughs> well, now. Woo, I'm pooped from all that laughing. I guess I'll just get to the point now. The point? Hey, you um... guys really struck gold when you found that TV. Yes, indeed. That TV is an essential part of your school life here. What? I knew it was hiding a secret of some kind. What the heck? But I connected the antenna, so why is it just showing us the surveillance feed? <laughs> <laughs> Look how attentive they are now. Well then, I'm gonna let you in on a blood gushing secret and tell you about it. Ah! That TV is absolutely, without a doubt, displaying the signal coming in on the antenna. Huh? Huh? But what does that mean? <laughs> it's displaying the, the signal, but it's just us standing here. Uh, you're so stupid. Don't you get it? Fine, I'll just tell you. This killing game is being broadcast live to the entire world. It's the most popular thing on TV. What? This killing game is being broadcast live to the entire world. It's the most popular thing on TV. It doesn't matter how many times he says it. I don't know what it's supposed to mean. I mean, even if I understood the words, I'm not sure I'd understand the deeper meaning. What? Broadcast live to the entire world? What kind of bad joke is this? Can't be. Have they taken over the airwaves somehow? The camera feed is being broadcast? No way, that's impossible. That kind of overconfidence is a major weakness in your crisis management system, you know that? 
All you need is one weird trick that I found, and hijacking the airwaves is easy mode. Are you being serious right now? Of course. Of course. I heard a kind of creaking, but the sound was coming from my own mind. Like a boat tossing in the ocean, my mind had begun to creak and groan. Hey. Everything um... has a meaning, you know. All those hints I gave you, all those tantalizing tidbits about the school's mysteries, even me luring you here right now. Why would I do any of that without a reason? It was all for my captive audience, to show them true despair like they'd never seen it before. I became the director of a despair-based production. This is the ultimate reality show, the best in despair entertainment. What are you saying? You're lying. If this was on TV, the police and everyone else would be going crazy. Yeah, there's no way they wouldn't have tried to come and rescue us. Actually, what if they already did? Huh? Yes, indeed. But then again, it's not really any of their business, right? Sure, some people might yell at their TV to try and warn you, but who would actually come here to help? Hmm. Don't you think that's possible? I don't really know personally, though, so whatever. This can't but to take be. control of all communications like that, you'd need an astronomical amount of resources. <laughs> yup, so how could things have come this far? Well, yeah. that's a secret. There's something you all need to do first, remember? What? Of yeah, duh. There's the little business of... Ding dong bing boom baby! It's my favorite part. But it's nighttime, so they have to go back to sleep. A I actually really thought they were going to get out of there. Oh, the body's been discovered. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. Wow. Okay, so we really have to investigate that body, but where's Kyoko, though? Class trial? Do you mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the next Monokuma file right here. Everyone give it all you've got, okay? Okay, things are gonna get pretty crazy from here on out. You're in for a heck of a ride. I can't wait. And then he was gone. Reality was incomprehensible. The truth hopelessly out of reach. All we were left with was despair. We stood there for I don't know how long, frozen in place. I couldn't think. It took everything I had just to keep myself standing upright. Uh, I don't understand any of this. What's the spare entertainment and how is he still alive? I'm sick I of thought this. that finally, finally we could get out of here. Yeah. And plus, what did he say about a class trial? Stop talking. Well, that part's obvious. The class trial is the class trial. What it means is that at this point, we have to figure out who the culprit is. Figure out who killed Kyoko. No, that wasn't Kyoko. What the heck? What are you talking about? I thought Mokuro Ikusabo is the one who died. <laughs> the victim was female, right? Kyoko certainly fulfills that condition. And if Monokuma is still alive and active, that means that the mastermind, Mokuro Ikusaba, isn't dead. <laughs> so naturally, that body can't belong to her. So it must be Kyoko. There is no other possibility. The body is Kyoko's? Kyoko's been murdered? No, it's not possible! Because, because I don't know anything about her yet. I don't even know who she really is. To have it end like this. That's not Kyoko, there's no freaking way. I don't believe it. I refuse to believe it. Quiet. Whether you believe it or not doesn't matter. The truth is the truth. If you refuse to believe, it's your responsibility to uncover the truth for yourself. Myself? <laughs> anyway, we'd better begin. But... But, if we're gonna have a class trial, then that means the killer. That's right. Correct. It must be someone participating in our school life. Wait, so you're saying one of us killed Kyoko? Hm. Well, that's not precisely what I'm saying, no. Huh? Huh? But you just said... Stop talking. I don't have time to explain now. There is a vertible mountain of issues I need to confirm. <laughs> so I'm going to begin my search. If you value your lives, you'll put everything you have into this. That is how this game works, after all. Investigate. Okay, before we investigate, I'm putting some chapstick on these dry ass lips. All right, now I'm gonna check out the Monokuma file. Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. So even the Monokuma file doesn't tell us who the victim actually was. The unidentified body. Could it really be Kyoko? Or... I have no choice. I have to investigate. I have to uncover the truth for myself. No matter what, I have to find out what happened. Or we're all dead. 
I need to go back to the scene of the crime. Back to the garden. Monokuma file has been added to the. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to hype myself up. Okay, time to get started. I need to check anywhere that may be important from one end to the other. I just need to do what I always do, which is investigate my asshole. All right, let's check out the knife. There's a knife laying on the ground. Is this... It must be the knife that was stuck in the body before it exploded. The force of the explosion must have thrown it over here. The Monokuma file said the knife went all the way through the body from front to back. Does that mean this knife is what caused the fatal injury? Either way, this knife. It looks really familiar. Wait, is this... See, remember I told you he was chilling and just sleeping? And then somebody was standing over his bed with a knife in their hand? That's it? It's the knife the person was holding. This is getting really weird. There are just too many strange coincidences. Yeah, see? Just standing over the bed, all creepy. Whoever the person in the mask was that attacked me last night, they were holding that knife. And now it's in their body. And that same knife was used to stab that same masked attacker we found here. So maybe this masked person got stabbed because... Because, because, because... Wait, hold on. That person right here doesn't have red fingernails, but the person that's laying on the ground that exploded has red fingernails. Watch. When they attacked, I was in kind of a trance. Maybe I reacted by grabbing the knife, and maybe then I... Hi. Nah, you couldn't do it. You a pussy boy, Makoto. Look. Oh, wait. How come it's not showing the red fingernails no more? And if this really is Kyoko, it would mean Kyoko is the one that attacked me. But why the mask? I just don't know. I don't remember anything clearly from last night. No. No, it can't be. There's no way. Knife at the crime scene has been added to the... Watch. There's gonna be red fingernails. If I check the body more thoroughly, maybe then I'll find out for sure if it's Kyoko or not. Okay, let's check that ball day. See? Red fingernails! Huh? There's something weird about the body's fingernails. Oh, these are fake nails. They're really long. They seem like they'd get in the way of normal activity. Fake nails has been added to the ratatata! Ratatata! Is this a tattoo? It got burnt, so I can't make out the whole thing, but it looks like it's a picture of a dog or something. I've never seen anything like that before. Tattoo added to the taka 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 taka. The lower half of the body didn't get wet at all. After the body blew up, the top half got set on fire, so I dumped a bucket of water on it. Which explains why the bottom half isn't wet. There's nothing strange about that, right? Um, sure, I guess. What else can I look at here? I could look at the chesticles. The upper half of the body got set on fire in the explosion, so it's totally blackened. Also, the top half of the body is wet. Yeah, because the body was on fire, and then you threw the bucket on there. That's because it got set on fire, and I threw water on it. Since I only threw water on the part that was on fire, the top half, the bottom half is still dry. In other words, there's nothing strange about the top half being wet. There isn't, right? Exploded body has been added to the- BOOM 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 BOOM! Okay, let me back out, because I think I'm done here and I'm tired of looking at this body. I don't think I've seen everything yet. Okay, hold on. The white jacket the victim was wearing got totally burnt up. There's only one little piece left. And that is... right here. The lower half of the body. Okay, 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 we got it. Let me back out. Hold on, let me get out of here. Get me out of this place. Okay, let me check this control panel because I remember this controlled the sprinklers in this room. This is the panel that controls the sprinklers. They're set to turn on at 7.30 every morning and Monokuma said the time positively couldn't be changed. Huh? Hold on. So the sprinklers turn on at 7.30 each morning, right? Then if the body was here before then, the sprinklers should have gotten it wet, which would mean the murder must have taken place around the time of chick chick ba 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 I remember that there were some chickens in the chicken coop. I count four chickens. Huh? Four? Oh no, did somebody eat the chicken? What's going on, Makoto? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you remember how many chickens there were in here? Hmm, of course, there were precisely five. Yeah, right? Huh? Huh? What's wrong? Yo, one of the chickens is gone! That was my bro, bro! There's only four chickens here now. We're one short. Huh? Ah! That's so weird. I wonder when it disappeared. What? I was down here just before nighttime last night, and there were definitely five chickens then. What are we gonna do? 
Going from five to four is gonna have an impact on the structure of the world. Conspiracy. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If even a single piece disappears, the entire world will remain unfinished. I did my best to ignore Hero and focus on the problem at hand. Why did one of the chickens disappear? Could it be related to the case? Chickens added to the kata, kata. What is this on the ground? So these look like fragments of something. They're all burnt, so I can't be sure, but I feel like I've seen something like this before. But where? Wait, was it there? I'll have to double check that later. I have no idea where that is. Wait, what the hell is that? Fragments near the dead body has been added to the... That's somebody throwing a ninja star, by the way. Okay, let me check the tool shed back here. Just to be sure, I should take a look at the tool shed. You never know, guys. This room is dusty and disorganized. In other words, a pretty stereotypical tool shed. Is this a tarp? Wait, was there a tarp in here before? I should probably look into that. It could be related to the case. Okay, let me check one time. The top is wet and covered with mud and grime. But the underside is totally clean and completely dry. One side of the tarp is wet and dirty. Something about that bothers me. Tarp has been added to that. That's one thing in here that concerns me. Um, wait, what about the crazy diamond pickaxe from my bro Mondo, bro? There's something carved into the middle of this pickaxe. Oh, wait, that's it? Okay, that's not part of the case, so let me back on out of here. So that was the only evidence that was in this room. So, now that we checked out everything, I think I'm leaving here. I don't think I've seen everything there is to see. Oh, uh, what else haven't I checked? This thing? The Monokuma flower, huh? Is it true? Does it really eat paper, plastic, and people? Anyway, I don't think it's related to the case, so I think I'll just stay away. Oh, okay. Hmm. Good timing, Makoto. I wanted to talk to you. About what, my good man? So in other I'd words, like to hear your alibi. Alibi? In other words, Correct. I'd love to hear where you were after nighttime began last night. Um, well, I was sick, so I was asleep all night. But why are you asking about that now? And what's nighttime got to do with it? Naturally. Isn't it obvious the murder took place after nighttime? How can you know that for sure? Hmm. Because just after nighttime began, I came to the garden. I was going around looking for everyone so I could tell them about Monokuma. Hiro's been spending most of his time in the garden the last few days, so I figured he'd be here. And I can confirm that when I arrived last night, there was nobody here. In other words. So the murder could have only taken place at some point during nighttime, after I left the garden. However, Toko, Hiro, Hina, and I were in the gym together the entire night last night. What? Hm. Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's room to get them. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. In other words, all four of us have airtight alibis. The only ones who don't have alibis are me and Kyoko. That's right. And if the victim really is Kyoko... And I'm the only one without an alibi. Hmm. Also, when we went to get Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. What? But you never came to the door. So, where precisely were you? I'm telling the truth. I was in my room, but I was dead asleep. I had a fever, so... That's hardly an alibi. I know. <laughs> so, what now? You seem to be at quite the disadvantage here. I'm the only one without an alibi. That's... Really bad, isn't it? Biakui's account has been added to the scratatatata. Can I back out of here? I don't think I've seen everything there is to see. What haven't I seen, huh? Tell me. Listen, Makoto. Do you remember how the body looked, you know, before it blew up? Um, if I remember right. It was wearing some kind of mask and a big white coat. Also, there was a knife sticking out of the stomach and the area around it was stained with blood. Apparently, the wound had stopped bleeding, but the blood on the body was still wet. The Ikuya said not to touch it to avoid getting all bloody. But for how much blood there was on the body, I didn't see any on the ground around it. Okay. Wow, thanks. That was a big help. Now that you explained it, I totally remember how it looked. Well, having to talk about it like that helped me remember it a lot better too. So thank you too. Body before the explosion has been added to the... Pew! Pew, 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 pew. I'm running out, guys. I'm running out. Hmm. It's 11 o'clock right now. Okay, and... Oh, well, I was just thinking about how when we first found the body. When the body was found, huh? I should look back at what I did this morning to help me remember when that was. Monokuma's announcement woke me up at 7 o'clock as usual, and I headed for the dining hall pretty soon. Once I got there, I met up with Hina. That was right around 
Then I headed to the gym where everyone else was waiting. Next, Toko went to get the pickaxe, and that's when she found the body. What time was it then? Hmm. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, when we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 on the dot now. That's right. It had to have been right around 9 o'clock. I like that Makoto has to remember what he did last night because for the people who are just seeing this for the first time and me not having the footage of the last episode, it kind of gives you a picture of everything that happened the night before. So that's good. Ah, now that you mention it, I think you're right. So I think we can say for sure that the body was found at 9 a.m. Okay, my job's done. That's a pretty small job. When the body was found has been added to the... I'm just going to say truth bullet section. I think I've checked everything I need in this area, but I'm not done yet. There are other areas I need to check, specifically the fragment I found before. There's somewhere I need to go in order to confirm my suspicions. And I still need to find out more about Kyoko. How? Is that corpse really Kyoko? If that's true, ain't no way that's Kyoko, bro. Was that also Kyoko who attacked me last night? I don't think so. If I can find out more about her, maybe I can answer that question. Kyoko was never the kind of person to talk about herself all that much. Maybe if I can get into her room, I'll be able to find out more. But the key to her room... Oh yeah, Biakuya has it. Clear now. I will simply limit your options. I cannot allow you to engage in any further suspicious activity. What? Limit my options? Just give give me the key to your room! I don't have a choice. I have to see if he'll let me borrow her room key. Okay, let's see. Hey, um, Biakuya? Hm. If you do come up with an alibi, I'd be happy to hear it later, at the class trial. Oh no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyogo's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. You're the prime suspect after all. What? Of course, if I were to go with you, that would be a different story. Then will you go with me? Hm. Sorry, I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later and we'll see. Goodbye. Depending on my mood, I may go with you. Or I may not. Come back later, huh? Okay, then in the meantime, I should go look around somewhere else. Maybe I should check out that one area. What the hell are you talking about? What area? Okay, you know what? Since I want to refresh you guys' memory or get you up to speed, I'm going to show you this room right here real quick. So you guys can see what it is. So this room is where, like, a battle took place. They said it was, like, the most tragic event in human history. Remember that? Like, from a previous episode, Monokuma was saying that in this school... There was like the most tragic event in human history. That was it. So yeah, guys, this is the Monokuma figure that they found on the floor. And then Biakuya and the gang disassembled it. So they thought that they could go around the school freely without having to worry about getting punished. But apparently they were wrong. Monokuma's laying dismantled on the floor, but I figured it wouldn't be here. You know? I just found something. What is it? It's... Huh? It's what? Hmm. A bomb. There's one installed in every Monokuma robot, I'm sure. A bomb? And that bomb went missing. There's no doubt about that. The fragments I found in the garden. Fragments near the dead body has been updated in the truth. So it was part of the bomb. Okay, I've checked everything else I can think of. All that's left now is Kyoko's room. I should head back to the garden and ask Biakuya. I gotta head back to the freaking garden? You wanted to check out Kyoko's room, right? Very well, let's go. Ah, oh, wait for me! Biakuya walked off without a second glance, and I hurried after him on our way to the dorms. Oh, thank goodness that we already teleported here, because if I had to go all the way to the fifth floor just to ask his candy ass to go inside Kyoko's room, and then I had to walk all the way down to the first floor, I would have slapped this four-eyed freak. Well then, here we go. Biakuya took out the key and slid it into the keyhole, and then... And it's open. Looks like it, thanks. Alright, so we're just gonna walk in here. Are me and him gonna hold hands going in here? I mean, he clearly doesn't trust me. But this seems like your run-of-the-mill room, I guess. So, this is Kyoko's room. What's this? There's something on the table. It's a woodblock decoration. What? What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key. The lockers at those really traditional public bathhouses use them for their lockers. Hmm. I wouldn't know. I've never gone to a public bathhouse. That doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Biakuya doing something like that. It's certainly But if it possible. is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? What? Hmm. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure I saw something in the dojo that this might go to. The dojo? Woodblock key has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay, what about... Um, the bed. Here's her bed. 
I don't see anything interesting here, at least not as far as the case is concerned. Bathroom? Here's the bathroom. She might have certain articles hanging out to dry. I better not look inside. Yeah, you right about that. Hey, you right about that, big dog! What? You wanted to come here, right? So what is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular. I just thought we might find some kind of clue here. A clue that might help us understand Kyoko. Come on. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take my time out of my search to come here? Sorry. Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us some sort of direction here. More concrete. Oh, I know. Earlier, Kyoko gave me something. Huh? What's this? It's true. Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it if something ever happens to me. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Found it! Hm. What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happened, I should open it. Hm. Well, something has certainly happened, so open it. Okay. I opened the envelope and looked inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets. What? That's all that was in there? Yeah, looks like it. Under the sheets? What could it be? Why don't you check under the freaking sheets then? But could something be hidden under the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I lifted up the sheets... What's this? I found a crumpled up piece of paper. Class number 78 student registry. Mukuro Ikusaba. It appears to be Mukuro Ikusaba's profile. Yeah, looks like it. That's probably the other thing Kyoko stole when she stuck into the headmaster's room along with the key. God, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll tell you. It was a key and... Ooh, that's it. This must be the blank that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaning was unappealing. And this is what she left behind. Hm. I don't have time for your sentimental indulgences. Hurry up and finish your search. Okay. I made an effort to pull myself together, then looked down at the profile sheet. Name, Mukuru Ikusaba. Sex, female. The ultimate soldier. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary school, she won a survival game tournament and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up no information and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later, alone and completely unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. She insisted that she hadn't been kidnapped, that she'd received battle training of her own volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. Makuro's profile has been added to the Skratatatatata. The Ultimate Soldier, a mercenary group. This doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in, it's like a completely different dimension. It's like one non-fiction and the other is sci-fi. There's no way to even compare the two. That's how different this is. That's how I saw things just as an ordinary person, but then... I see. I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? You recognize it? Naturally. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle-crazed warmongers. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is all part of a world totally removed from the one I live in. Hmm. I have to say I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard says that Fenrir has already... Whoa, I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player and a bit player is becoming our hero. Ah, it's you! Huh? What have you got in your pretty little hand there? Uh-oh, you found her profile! So what if we did? Don't freak out on me, I'm not gonna hold it against you or anything. And in case you're wondering, I don't hold it against Kyoko either, even though she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and slice it up and devour it. Bears are omnivorous, you know. What? Are rule violations really so unforgivable? You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Hmm. Of course I am. A proper school life is built on the dedication to organization and order. Which is why even I, as a school headmaster, have to follow the regulations myself. Oh, so you're saying you have to follow your own rules as well? Of course! Absolutely! I can't have you complaining about how unfair it all is, can I? Hmm. 
In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Interesting? <laughs> it's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually one of the participants in this killing game. I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? Hmm. I was thinking I should probably clarify that. Hey, um... When you all first got together in the main hall way back when, there were 15 people there, right? I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. A misunderstanding? Are you saying... In other words... That's right, there weren't actually 15 of you. Yes, indeed. The total number of students taking part in this killing game was actually 16! 16? Then... Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in the school. I'm so happy that it keeps flashing back and showing the things that I was explaining in the beginning of this episode. I'm so happy. Because now you guys are getting caught up. The 16th student, Mukuro Ikusaba. She's part of this school life. So the one making all the regulations is... Why? Huh? Huh? Did you say something? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? Hmm. Oh, well, because... <laughs> like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings. And since we've got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know. Yes, indeed. Make sense? Well, now. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge. Yeah. I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Kirigiri, so I'm going to share a little secret with you. Seriously? Hey. You know um... how she wears those stupid gloves day in, day out, all the time? Well, don't tell anyone I told you, but <laughs> she wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars that she doesn't want anyone to see. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that's all you get. <laughs> Monokuma's account has been added to the Kyoko wears those gloves to cover up a bunch of scars? Wait, so on the back of her hand... The tattoo... Wait, but no! Monokuma specifically said they were scars, right? And that's why Kyoko wears those gloves to hide the scars. Which means... Those fake nails on the corpse... Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Huh? What? Forget about her. What matters right now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? Such. God must have really hated you to make you so dull. <laughs> Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16 students, right? Which means Mukuro was a student here. That's right. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukuro is the one creating the rules to the game. But why would he tell us that? And why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. But the mere fact that he said that proves that Mukuro is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Mukuro is related to the case? It's certainly Perhaps she's possible. the one who killed Kyoko. What? Hmm. That would explain why we would have to have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her part of the school killing game. Mukuro is the killer? She killed Kyoko? Hmm. Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? In fact, that's exactly what I thought when the investigation first began. What? But, based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear. Mukuro Ikusaba isn't the culprit. Huh? What makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Mukuro, the ultimate despair, was the mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good point. So, in other words... Mukuro giving us information that would raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense, then, to assume that Mukuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Mukuro and come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you say it, it definitely does seem possible. But if that's really true, if Mukuro isn't the killer, then who is? Hmm. Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on. I'm sure there are other places in need of investigation. I should find out if that key and the dojo really are connected. Let's go. Well, are you coming? We're gonna go together? Oh yeah, we are gonna go together. All right, me and B Kuya tag teaming. So this is where the key is gonna go to, I think. There are wooden lockers here. They use woodblock keys, just like at those super traditional public bathhouses. It looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. I see. Makoto, do you see the locker farthest to the right? Very strange. That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. 
You understand what that means, right? I should probably use the key we found on that locker, right? That's right. Well, just try it. Okay. I took out the woodblock key and inserted it into the locker's metal lock end. The locker eagerly accepted the key and it opened. There are arrows in here. It looks like 10 arrows in total. They look like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Titanium arrows has been added to the... Okay, there's something else inside the locker. It's a wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what this was used for. Is that a blood stain? I see. If it is, that means it must surely be related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow? But how could it possibly be involved? Bloody duct tape has been added to the... Is something wrong? Very strange. It's very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... The Akuya? Hmm. Forget it. Come on, we need to continue on to the next location. Huh? What next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir. Fenrir? You mean the mercenary group that Makuro was a part of? But how are we supposed to find out about that? The library! Isn't it obvious? Where in the school would you go to do research on something? Research. Are you talking about the archive? That's right, the archive has all kinds of info that general public doesn't have access to. Let's go. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's go! Take a look at this. Um, I have no idea what it says. What language is this? Hmm. How did you make it all the way to high school without learning a single word of French? Um, I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. <laughs> well, whatever. I'll read it for you, but I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times? Isn't that kind of extreme? Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, their mere presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago, they completely ceased all activity. At present, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Rumors indicate they were killed to keep them from revealing the many state secrets they'd acquired. Some, however, believe there was mounting internal tension within the group and they simply imploded. What? What is it? This all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. Hmm. Well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are part of our world. Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. <laughs> That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting definitely isn't the word I would use. <laughs> so, did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it, the report says something about where the name Fenrir comes from, right? <laughs> That's right, it said Fenrir is the Wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting related to that? To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Yeah, the victim had the tattoo on their wrist or on their um, back of their hand. What? They got a tattoo of Fenrir? Could that mean? Makuro Ikusaba's profile has been updated. Oh, dude, the class trial's already gonna begin? No! That was all the Avidance that we found? Time is utterly silent, and yet it wow. constantly assaults us, organisms, the earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. Damn, we don't even know who the person is. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. We don't even know who the victim is. <laughs> Then the time has come. All we can do now is try to uncover the truth during the class trial. That's right. It would seem that way. Let's go. Okay, guys. Well, I am going to end this episode here.
Like I said, I apologize that the screen wasn't recording the gameplay twice. Like, I recorded the same thing twice. I couldn't do it a third time, guys, because I already lost my voice. I was trying to do my best to give you guys the best commentary and the best voices in this episode. Hopefully, I did it justice. 50,000 likes, and we are going to go through with the fifth class trial. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.